Today I'm talking about a big, big issue, and that is when will the rapture of the church occur? A lot of people are interested in that. I'm talking about the Gog and Magog war, and in the news, Turkey is aligning themselves away from NATO and away from the EU and to Russia and China, just the way the Bible said that they would. I'm also answering your questions. I'm Jimmy Evans. Welcome to The Tipping Point Show. Welcome to the program. I'm really excited about today because I'm going to talk about when will the rapture of the church occur? Now, everybody knows that we don't know the exact day or hour, but we actually know a lot more than most people think about when the rapture will occur. We can really look forward to a specific, a specific event, I believe, of when Jesus is going to return in the rapture of the church. And so there are feasts. God gave the children of Israel seven feasts. And we absolutely know for positive that those seven feasts were a prophetic grid of the future. Leviticus chapter 23, God said, it says, The Lord spoke to Moses saying, Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, The feasts of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations, these are my feasts. Well, the word feast there is the Hebrew word moed. It just means an appointed festival. But the word convocation there, it means a public meeting it also means a dress rehearsal. I want you to come together for these festivals and you're going to have a dress rehearsal of something that's going to take place in the future. Well, let me tell you exactly how we know that that's true. So there are seven feasts of Israel. There are four that happen in the spring of the year and there are three that happen in the fall of the year. Okay. Well, the first feast is the Feast of Passover. In the Feast of Passover, the children of Israel were in Egypt uh, and God told them, take a male lamb, a young male lamb, and kill that lamb and take its blood and put it on the doorpost of your house, and death will pass over you tonight. So in commemoration of the original Passover, the feast of Passover among the Jewish people is they would all take a lamb. Uh, they would go through all the steps of that process that God prescribed in the book of Levit Leviticus, and they would take that lamb and they would uh, kill it and wipe the door, blood on the doorpost of their house and so on and so forth. Well, that was fulfilled in the death of Jesus. Jesus was killed uh, on the Feast of Passover. Jesus was crucified on the Feast of Passover. When John the Baptist saw Jesus coming, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. And so the, the Jews, they didn't know it. But when the Jewish people, Old Testament, and since Jesus died, when a Jewish person is celebrating Passover, whether they realize it or not, they're going through a dress rehearsal of the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. So the first, the first feast of Israel was a, God in the Old Testament was giving them a view of the future and major significant events that were going to happen in the future beginning with the death of Jesus. Well, the second feast was the Feast of Unleavened Bread that started the day after Passover. And so unleavened bread for seven days the children of Israel could not eat leavened bread. They had, everything had to be unleavened. Well, what's the significance of that? Leaven represents sin in the Bible. And so Jesus, so why would they not be able to eat bread, uh, leavened bread for seven days? Because seven is the number of perfection and uh, leaven represented sin. Jesus perfectly removed sin from the human race. That is the significance to the burial of Jesus. Once the death of Jesus was over, sin had been perfectly removed from the human race. Jesus was buried during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Jesus was resurrected on the, the Feast of first fruits. Okay, so this was, remember, the third day. Jesus was resurrected, and on that day was when the priest would wave the barley harvest. He would take the first fruits of the barley harvest and he would wave it uh, to God, okay? 1 Corinthians 15 says this, but now Christ has risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Jesus was the first fruits, according to Paul, of many brethren. So the resurrection of Jesus, we're also gonna be resurrected uh, from, from the dead. 
And so 1 Thessalonians 4 talks about it. 1 Corinthians 15 talks about it. And so Jesus was the first fruits. So in other words, he was crucified during the feast of Passover. He was buried during the feast of unleavened bread. And he was resurrected during the feast of first fruits. So when God gave the children of Israel the feast in the Old Testament, he was, they were, every time they celebrated those feasts, they were going through a dress rehearsal of the crucifixion, uh, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Then 50 days after first fruits came Pentecost. Pentecost, by the way, means 50. 50 is a very special number to the Jews because it's the number of Jubilee. Uh, during the year of Jubilee, all debt was remitted. All slaves went free. You got back all the land that you had lost. It was, a, and by the way, and for two years, you didn't work. In the 49th and 50th year, it was a, just a time of freedom and rest and all that stuff. So 50 to the Jewish mind is a very important num uh, number. It's the year of the Lord. And so the 50, 50 days after uh, the Feast of first fruits, the Holy Spirit fell on the on the upper room and the people of the upper room were filled with the Holy Spirit and the church was birthed. The church was birthed on the Feast of Pentecost. So what we see historically is we absolutely know that the seven feasts of Israel are a prophetic grid of future events because the first four were absolutely, totally uh, uh, fulfilled on the exact day that they were being held, okay, in order. First came Passover, then unleavened bread, then first fruits, then Pentecost. So they had to be fulfilled in order where there are three more feasts that are coming. So wh what is the future? In the Old Testament, they didn't know. When they were celebrating the feast, they didn't know that Jesus was going to you know, die and be buried and be resurrected and all that kind of stuff during the feast. But God was telling us and them in the Old Testament, here's what's coming in the future. Remember, there were four spring feasts and then there was the summertime. In other words, there was planting and there was harvest. Then in the fall, in the seventh month, there were three more feasts. Number seven is the number of perfection. So everything is going to be perfected. In the seventh month, there are three more feasts. The first is the Feast of Trumpets. Now I'm talking about the Feast of Trumpets. This, by the way, is a shofar. This is the trumpet. On the Feast of Trumpets, the, the priest would blow the shofar. And that would, and I believe that's the rapture of the church. I believe that, I don't know if it's this year. Now, this year, by the way, the Feast of Trumpets is a two-day feast. The Feast of Trumpets will be from sundown on September the 6th to sundown September the 8th. That's, I think, a Monday through a Wednesday uh, in Israel. And so this year, uh, the Feast of Trumpets, two-day feast, is September 6th to September the 8th. I believe some year that Jesus is going to rapture us during the Feast of Trumpets. And I'm going to talk to you in just a minute about why. Ten days after the Feast of Trumpets was the Feast of Atonement. This was a, the most holy day in Israel. Uh, this is the, uh, it was a day of fasting. It was a day of repentance, a very serious day. This is the second coming. When Jesus is coming to cleanse the, the Temple Mount, cleanse the Jerusalem, to defeat the armies of God, and the, come again. And then five days after atonement for seven days, there was the Feast of Tabernacles where the Jews lived for seven days in booths that they built. This is eternity with God. In the seventh month, the seventh feast, the, the seventh feast that lasted for seven days, seven, 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 ends all the feast and we are now in eternity with God. And so there are three major events that are going to happen in the future the rapture of the church, the second coming of Jesus, and eternity with God. We will live with God for eternity. So let me talk about the Feast of Trumpets and why I believe the Feast of Trumpets is connected to the rapture of the church. And the first is because Scripture links the rapture of the church with trumpets. Again, this is the trumpet. This is a shofar. I know many times, you know, we look at a trumpet as being like a brass instrument, you know, that Louis Armstrong played or something like that. This is the shofar. And this is what the priest would blow when the, uh, the Feast of Trumpets came. So here's what the Bible says. This is 1 Thessalonians 4. The Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet, the shofar of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Okay, this is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning with verse 51. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet 
for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. And so again, the rapture is uh, associated with trumpet. Now let me say this, it says at the last trumpet. So when you talk about the, the Feast of Trumpets, and Paul there refers to the last trumpet, this causes a lot of confusion among believers, and I want to help to, to clarify some of that confusion. Okay, the, there will be trumpets blown uh, in the book of Revelation. There are the seal judgments, the trumpet judgments, and the bowl judgments. The tr the, when it talks about the last trumpet, it's not talking about the seventh trumpet judgment of the book of Revelation. Those are not good trumpets. Those are bad trumpets. The Jewish person understands what a last trumpet means. During the feast of trumpets, the priest blew the shofar 100 times. For nine sessions, they would blow the trumpet 11 times in nine sessions. They would, in different kinds of blast, different sounds of blast. So nine times 11 is 99. So for nine different sessions, they blew the trumpet 11 times. That left one trumpet blast to go. And the last trumpet was the 100th blast that was the longest and loudest blast. And so the last trumpet simply means during the Feast of Trumpets, it was the last time the priest blew the trumpet in the loudest time. So let me talk about the other names of the Feast of Trumpets. This, this comes from the Mishnah. The Jews have been keeping the feast for, you know, over 3,000 years. And so the Mishnah is what it took the oral tradition of the Jews and they wrote it down. And so the Jews have different names for the Feast of Trumpets that are very, very telling and very revealing about the nature of the Feast of Trumpets. Let me give you some examples of this. One is Rosh Hashanah. You've probably heard of Rosh Hashanah. It's called the head of the year. Now, the Jews believe that the Feast of Trumpets is the head of the year. This is when God created Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. And by the way, many Jews believe the Garden of Eden is the Temple Mount in Israel or Jerusalem. And so this is when God created Adam. Now, right now we're in the year 5781 in the Hebrew calendar. This coming Rosh Hashanah that happens in September 6th through the 8th, it'll be the year 5782. Okay, so will Jesus come this year when the new year begins? And by the way, the, the rapture is the new beginning. Uh, we go to be with Jesus. This is a total new beginning for us. So it's Rosh Hashanah. And so trumpets is a season of new beginnings. Here's another phrase that Jews use for the Feast of Trumpets. It's Yom Teruah, which literally means a day of, bl of blowing or the day of the awakening blast. So this is 1 Thessalonians 4. The Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. And so when the trumpet blasts, it is an awakening blast for all those who are in their graves. So the Jews are saying, you know, going back for thousands of years, they're saying this is the day of the awakening blast. Exactly. That's what's going to happen at the rapture. Another phrase they use is Yom Hadin, referring to the day of judgment. This is Revelation 22. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give to everyone according to his work. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. So trumpets is going to be the day when Jesus judges the church. He says, Behold, I'm coming, and my reward is with me. It's also called Yom Hazikron, which is the day of remembrance. Remember, in Luke 17, when Jesus is describing the rapture, he says, Two people will be laying in a bed, one taken, one left. Two people standing in a field, one taken, one left. Two women grinding in a, in a, in a mill, one taken, one left. And so he's talking there about a selective rapture. It's a day of remembrance. God remembers who is his. He remembers who has made a decision for him. And so it's amazing to me in, in the Jewish mind, you know, the Jews are so brilliant and their culture is so rich. It's amazing to me how the Jews have all these different sayings concerning the Feast of Trumpets, which is exactly what the New Testament says about the rapture when Jesus comes. He's going to remember. And if you're a believer, you may be living through some difficulty right now. You may be living through some persecution right now of people who despise you for their faith. For your faith, I'm telling you, the most important thing that's going to happen is when this trumpet blasts, and the rapture occurs, Jesus is going to remember you. And he's going to remember that you received him, that you gave your life for him, 
and he's going to take you to be with him. That's the most important thing. Here's a remarkable one. The, the Jews call the trumpets the wedding day of the Messiah. Isn't it interesting? The wedding day of the Messiah. Jesus said in John chapter 14, in my father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. And as soon as I go, as sure as I go away, I'm going to return and receive you to myself that where I am, you may be also. That's Jewish wedding language. When a Jewish groom was going to marry his bride, he left his father's house with a bride price, went to the bride's house and gave her parents the bride price, then drank a glass of wine with them. Uh, and that sealed the, the betrothal. And at the end of that, he said to his bride, I won't drink of this glass again until I drink it with you in my father's house, which is exactly what Jesus said to the disciples in the upper room. Then he left and went to his father's house to, to build a house or a room, a chuppah, for he and his bride. Then he came back and got the bride. That's what Jesus is doing. We are the bride of Christ. We will marry Jesus Christ. Right now, Jesus is at the Father's house, but the rapture is when he comes back to get us and it becomes the wedding day of the Messiah. Okay, here's another saying they have, the day which no one knows. This is another phrase that the Jews use to describe the trumpets, the Feast of Trumpets, the day which no one knows. Why do they say that? Because it's a two-day feast, okay? So did you know, and I heard one Bible teacher teaching, and he said, when Jesus said that no one knows, this is Mark 13, Jesus said, of that day and hour no one knows, not even the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. When a, when a Jewish groom went to uh, build the room on for his bride, he could not go back to get his bride until his father gave him permission. And so the, the father had to examine the room, and once he approved of it, then he would say to his son, typically about a year later, he would say to his son, you can go get your bride now. Jesus said, I don't know. Uh, I don't know the day or the hour. Only the father does. This one teacher I heard said, when Jesus said that, he was effectively telling us he's coming during the Feast of Trumpets. So this year, the Feast of Trumpets is going to be September the 6th through the 8th, Monday through Wednesday. If I told you right now that Jesus was coming during the Feast of Trumpets, you still don't know the day or the hour because it's a two-day feast, okay? So I believe, I could be wrong about this, but I've studied this. Jesus, when, we, when God gave the children of Israel feast in the Old Testament, he was telling us the future in advance and they have to be fulfilled in order, okay? So uh, the day of atonement uh, or, you know, the, the day of atonement is not going to come or the feast of atonement is not going to come before the Feast of Trumpets or, you know, the Tabernacles is not going to come before the Feast of Trumpets. They all have to happen in order. And the next feast is the Feast of Trumpets and it's a wonderful feast. Everything begins new. The dead are raised from the grave. We are rewarded. We marry Jesus. All these wonderful things that we see in the Jewish culture and in the Mishnah that tells us what we have to look forward to. I believe the next major prophetic event that is going to happen in the world is the rapture of the church and me personally. Now, I'm, I always want to be ready for Jesus, okay? But I personally, every time that the Feast of Trumpets comes around in September, the feast happens September and October every year, every time the feast come. I get very serious about looking for Jesus to return during the Feast of Trumpets. Now, let me tell you one more thing. Israel, I live in central time zone in the United States. Israel is seven hours ahead of us, okay? So the, whatever we're doing now, they're seven hours ahead. So I don't go by Texas time or by central time. I go by Israel time because God doesn't go by, I don't believe by Texas time. He goes by Israel time, Jerusalem time. So seven hours earlier, in fact, and so, and by the way, the Jewish day does not start at sun up. It starts at sun down. Genesis says there was evening and morning the first day. There was evening and morning the second day. So again, in the Western mind, our day starts at sun up. But the, but the Feast of Trumpets, as soon as the sun goes down, September 6th, that feast uh, begins until Wednesday when the sun goes down. During that period of time, some year, I believe that Jesus is going to return from his, for his church, the Feast of Trumpets, and then the Feast of Atonement is going to be the second coming, so on and so forth. So 
When is the rapture going to occur? That's the question that I'm answering. I believe that it will happen some year during the Feast of Trumpets. That's just my personal opinion. But I believe based on the Feast of Israel, based on all the information I've given you, I believe it's very sound to believe that. And I believe, again, you should always be ready for Jesus to return. But I don't believe that it was guesswork of when Jesus was going to be crucified. It was not guesswork of when Jesus would be buried, resurrected, or the day of Pentecost. All of those things were foretold through the Feast of Israel. They were dress rehearsals. The Feast of Trumpets is also a dress rehearsal of the wedding day of the Messiah, the time of the awakening blast, when everything starts new, and when Jesus comes for his church. I hope that this is encouraging to you because Jesus is coming very soon. I hope you're ready. Right now we're going to go to the portion of our program that's for subscribers only. I want you to become a subscriber. If you're not, it's $7 a month, $77 a year, endtimes.com. We have articles. And by the way, we have archives. When you become a part of endtimes.com, we have archives of the podcast of articles that go back for a couple of years. A lot to bless you, a lot to inform you. And not just to inform you, you can also bless other people when you gain this knowledge. So $7 a month, $77 a year, become a part of endtimes.com right now. We're going to talk about the nation of Turkey and how they're going away from the West to Russia and China, just the way the Bible said they would, and I'll be answering questions. God bless you. If you're a subscriber, stay tuned.